Hey guys, welcome back to The Reel. This will be part one of a two-part video on the spool. On the first half we'll be doing all the lathe cutting and on the second half all the milling. This piece has proven to be the most complex part of the project yet, so you get to see me make a couple of fun mistakes. Just like the frame, we'll be cutting this from the same piece of 4 inch round bar as before. First thing to do here is to square the part up on the lathe. Next I'm out of the rotary table in the mill to cut the big groove in the face. After some experimentation, this is definitely the easiest way to go to make this type of feature. After truing up the work, a 3 8 inch end mill was used to dive into the face. This process was repeated until we were over an inch into the part. As the groove got deeper, I ended up having to use a shop vac to evacuate the chips, otherwise the cut would not leave a smooth finish. Back on the lathe, the center portion was taken down to the final dimension. This was the first mistake. I tried to clean up this edge using this pretty cheap cutter, but no matter what speed or what feed I used, I got a lot of chatter. We'll come back to this later with a better tool. In these next couple of passes, the outside face is taken to the final dimensions. Now that the facing is complete, I'm going to prepare to cut out the spool itself. This will be done with a combination of a cutoff tool, a left hand cutting bit, and a right hand cutting bit to open up the space. As you'll see later in this video, I actually made this piece twice, and on a second attempt, I used a real nice high quality cutoff tool to cut the entire spool. This was a much more efficient process than what you see here, using the left and right hand bits to get it all done. Now that the face thickness is established, I'm going to use this as my zero point to cut the step on the back of the face. From there, we'll have an accurate measurement on how wide to cut the spool. This process really sucked.
Once the OD was established, the slot was taken out to its final width. So this indexable cutting tool fixed all my problems with the tool chatter and made a much cleaner finish on the pass. Because I don't have a right hand boring bar, I got away with spinning the machine backwards and cutting on the wrong side of the part to cut the inside of this piece. And here's where it all went wrong. This right here is a bad idea. There is nowhere near enough material to hold that part firmly while you cut. And let me be your example of that. While I throw my pants in the washing machine, let's watch that again in slow-mo. So that sucked, completely ruined the part, and ended up having to start over again on the whole thing from scratch. Fast forward like two weeks, and here we are again in a slightly different order, but continuing more or less where we left off. This time I have a new plan. Off camera I made two small spacers to stuff into the spool. This will give the chuck something meaty to grab onto and prevent that from ever happening again. These are cut slightly bigger than a spool with a small gap between them. So when we squeeze down on the chuck, we'll have a firm hold on all the components at the same time. Back in the lathe, this is working much better. And we'll proceed and finish out the part without any other big hiccups. On the back side of the spool, this raised section is going to become the area of contact for the drag washer. The recessed area around the outside will provide an air gap. Next, the center drill is used to prepare for the main board. Next, 5 sixteenths all the way through the part. Then we raise that to 3 eighths of an inch all the way through.
next to boring bar is used to take that hole out to the final dimension of 500 thousandths of an inch. The next cut will be one of the counter bores for the main bearings. This will be done on both sides with that same boring bore. After the final dimension is reached, to do a quick fit check with the actual bearing to confirm we got it right. Next I'll cut a groove for the retaining ring that keeps the bearing in place. I'll do this with a homemade tool I made out of one of those cheap boring bars from earlier. I just put it up on the grinder and kept grinding it down until it was just a little bit bigger than the width of the clip. The final cut on this side is a small recess to protect the spool from running into the drag disc. To finish out the part, the same bearing bore and groove ring are cut on the opposite side, just the way you see here. After the part was sanded down and cleaned up, I installed the bearings by dropping them in place. Next, after something like 20 takes, I installed these clips in without them flying across the room. The same bearing assembly is shown here on the back side, assembled just the same way. And until it comes time to throw it up in the mill, that's the finished part. Like and subscribe if you like my videos, and be sure to come back for part 2.